Hi everybody, what is up? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. This is an apology video. Uh, wait, wait, hang on. Hi. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in judgment. I just hope you guys can forgive me. A while back, I made a video predicting that Hamish was not going to be the main character of the new Hunger Games book. And I was so wrong. So yes, my prediction was incorrect, and it turns out that Hamish is the main character of the new Hunger Games book. You're probably thinking you should have seen that coming. Listen, it was a fun theory. I still recommend you go watch the video because I thought it was I thought it was goofy and fun. But the cover got announced a few weeks ago and I completely missed it. And none of you commented to tell me, okay? What do you mean it's my job to keep you updated on the book news? You know I live under a rock. So anyway, I saw yesterday that they announced the cover and I was like, well, we've got to talk about it. So we already knew the book was called Sunrise on the Reaping and that it was going to be loosely about propaganda and the 50th Hunger Games, but we didn't really know anything beyond that other than what already existed in the original trilogy about the 50th Hunger Games because it talks about it a little bit. My theory was that we weren't going to end up in Hamish's perspective because Hamish goes into the games. So I thought that because we already got multiple books with Hunger Games in them where we got Katniss's perspective on the Hunger Games and that in the prequel we didn't get the perspective of the person in the Hunger Games. We got a perspective from outside. I thought maybe she would do something like that again and I had some theories as to who it would be. Again, I was wrong. Hamish is the main character of this book. So the cover is purple. So this is my copy of the prequel and you can see it's kind of this like reflective purpley. I don't know if it's showing up on camera the way it does in person, but it's like sort of a purple. But this is interesting because this is the paperback copy. The hardcover was green. The interesting thing here about this is that it's a much brighter purple, and I imagine that's gonna be the hardcover color. Now this could mean absolutely nothing, but my biggest joy in life is overanalyzing things and unpacking things that don't need to be unpacked, you know? Things that can be left in the suitcase, uh, -uh we take them right out of there. So there is something really interesting to me about the fact that with the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the hardcover was green and then the paperback ended up being this purpley color, and now we're gonna get a purple hardcover. I don't know what color they'll end up making the paperback, and we won't know for a while because presumably they're not gonna print it in paperback until they stop selling the hardcover well. The other thing that's fascinating though is you can see, you know what, it's probably gonna look better for you guys if I put it on the screen, huh? I should probably be a real YouTuber. You can see that there is a bird and a snake, but they are connected at the bottom and there's a bunch of like spokes of a crown. So this book is called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and the cover also has a bird and a snake on it. However, you can see that the bird and the snake are not connected. They are two different beings and they exist in this circle that is similar to, hang on, the Mockingjay pin, right? This is the Mockingjay pin from the original book from the original cover. We also have this kind of like graphic line situation going on. Now this is a pretty consistent theme. However, in the original trilogy, you can see that the circles stayed in the corners. All three of them have a circle in the corner. Where is it on this one? Yeah, it's really hard to see, but it's up in that top corner. You see that? In these books, these all have this like circular line design that connects somehow to the bird on the cover, right? The bird is always in flight. Notice how the bird is in flight in each of these images. And if we look on the Mockingjay cover, we can see, see this, see all these little circle things. Let's return back to the Sunrise on the Reaping cover. So if we look at the Sunrise on the Reaping cover, we notice something very fascinating. Much like the other prequel, we have a bird and a snake. And we are still in a way making a circle, but not nearly as strongly as we have on the covers in the past. It's a much more open circle and the bird and the snake are connected together into one being and there is a crown in the middle. You'll also notice how it has some of those like circle graphic things from the Mockingjay cover, but broken up like it is on the Mockingjay cover instead of together and in a consistent line like on these covers. Now this could just be good branding, could just be that they wanted to stick to the design that they had before, but I don't think it's that simple. I don't think Miss Suzanne Collins would allow just any cover to come out the door. So again, I know I'm like diving way too deep into this, but let me tell you what I think these things are supposed to symbolically represent, right? In the original trilogy, obviously the Mockingjay is Katniss. The Mockingjay is in flight on all of the covers, as I've already said, but is the most in flight on the actual Mockingjay cover. So we see Katniss kind of on her Mockingjay journey being 
in a pin for the first one, being a much more realistic looking bird that's starting its flight in Catching Fire, and then being in full flight on Mockingjay. We also have the graphic stuff that I pointed out. Now to me, this piece of it could represent the capital and the hold the capital has on the people. It's very graphic, very utilitarian kind of looking. And here we can see how there's these two circles and they have these lines coming in and they have these things kind of capturing the Mockingjay pin, right? And on Catching Fire, we see the same thing. We have two connecting in, we have a circle, but we have the bird in flight. Then we have Mockingjay where we can see that this symbolic representation of the capital possibly is in pieces, much like the capital is at the end of the book. When we look at the prequel, we see that we have the bird, the snake, tree, and it's in the middle of just complete circles, intact circles. This takes place during the 10th Hunger Games. This is President Snow's book, right? This is kind of his origin story. And so we see almost the formation of the capital as we know it through this book, hence the circles, right? Now it's pretty widely agreed upon that the bird in this is Lucy Gray, who was the person who went into the Hunger Games. She was a tribute and the snake is Coriolanus who goes on to become President Snow. So let's return back to the sunrise on the reaping cover. You can see how we have a bird and a snake together in one being. I think this is important. On the prequel cover, we had a bird and a snake as separate creatures and we had Lucy Gray and Coriolanus. I think that the bird and the snake on this cover are supposed to represent the two different sides of Haymitch. When we dive into reading the actual synopsis, you'll see what I mean. We know some of what happened to Haymitch. We know that he tried to kind of fight against the Capitol and we know that they kept him in line by killing a bunch of people in his life. By the way, side note, I said something about potentially like someone else in the Hunger Games being his girlfriend or Katniss's mom being his girlfriend or something like that. And a bunch of people got mad at me because he said that they killed his girlfriend. Plot twists can happen, right? Maybe he lied, maybe she escaped. Who knows, relax, have a little fun. There can be plot twists. Sometimes we're told things that turn out not to be true, but whatever, at least as far as we know of the books that have come out to date, Haymitch's family and girlfriend were killed by the Capitol because he would not fall in line. So I think there's something to be said for the connection of the snake and the bird. I think that we're maybe going to see Haymitch really want to rebel against the Capitol and eventually be brought in line. And we are maybe going to see how he becomes a part of this propaganda machine machine because of what they do to him and his family and how they kind of get him to behave. And so we'll get to see kind of these two different aspects of him as a character, as opposed to it being kind of separated in two different characters, the very rebellious spirit of Lucy Gray and the very like straight laced and careful character of Coriolanus Snow. Like we're going to get to see the rebel and the capital supporter like in one person in Haymitch. Now the spikes in the middle could represent a few different things. They very much look like a crown, but if my memory serves, there's something to do with spikes with this Hunger Games, like something to do with the way the arena is set up. I don't quite remember. Maybe it's sort of a reference to how the arena is going to look and sort of a reference to a crown. Now the interesting thing is the combination of this crown and the color of the cover being purple implies a very royal aspect to this book which is fascinating because as I said, we know that Hamish doesn't really comply with what the Capitol wants him to do and they end up killing his family as a result and claiming that it was because they said he cheated for the way that he won. And this is all in an attempt to control him. So why all of the royal imagery? Like why are we getting a crown? Why is the book purple? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I'm fascinated to find out. Is it because President Snow is a key figure in this book and so we're gonna see more of him? Is it a reference to the Capitol's full control over the people at this point in time? Does Haymitch end up in a position of royalty by going along with what the Capitol wants for a time and ends up really benefiting from doing what they ask him to do? Could be any number of things. I don't think it's accidental. The other thing that's really interesting is the circle that we were talking about, right? So if we look again at the prequel cover and we see the concentric circles and all of the circles on all of the covers that I think kind of represent the capital, we see that it's still circular, but there are these gaps. I think that that represents that there's a little bit of a shattering of the power of the capital at some point in this book. 
I wonder if we are not going to see the start of the chain of events that leads to Katniss's Hunger Games, where she is able to kind of break everybody out and rebel against the Capitol. I wonder if we're going to see kind of the beginning of the end for the Capitol somewhere in this book. I think that's a really fun idea. But I really want to see if there's like one distinct moment that it seems like Snow makes a mistake or something. And that's what kind of shatters this circle, if you will, that is the Capitol and eventually leads to the possibility of rebellion 25 years later. So that's the cover. The title is Sunrise on the Reaping, which we've already talked about a little bit. The Reaping is the part of the Hunger Games where they actually pick the tributes. And when we dip into the synopsis, so this is basically like what it's going to say on the back of the book when you get the physical copy, or I guess on the hardcover, it'll be on the inside flap. As the day dawns on the 50th annual Hunger Games, fear grips the districts of Pan Am. This year, in honor of the quarter quell, twice as many tributes will be taken from their homes. Back in District 12, Hamish Abernathy is trying not to think too hard about his chances. All he cares about is making it through the day and being with the the girl he loves. When Hamish's name is called, he can feel all his dreams break. He's torn from his family and his love, shuttled to the capital with the three other District 12 tributes, a young friend who's nearly a sister to him, a compulsive odds maker, and the most stuck up girl in town. So we know that Maisley's mom's sister is going to be one of these three individuals. I don't know which it is because the compulsive odds maker, they don't, well, I guess it has to be a boy, huh? Because they do two boys and two girls. She's either the young friend who's nearly a sister to him or the most stuck up girl in town. We will see, but we don't know who the other girl is. We don't have her identity. I don't think. As the games begin, Hamish understands that he's been set up to fail, but there's something in him that wants to fight and have that fight reverberate far beyond the deadly arena. So the book's called Sunrise on the Reaping. Even the synopsis focuses a lot on the day of the actual reaping. So I had a theory in my whole theory video that if we did get Hamish as the main character, that we weren't going to see as much of his Hunger Games. A, because we already kind of know exactly what happens in his Hunger Games from the synopsis of it that happens in Catching Fire. But my theory was that we were going to get a bunch of what happened after the games. Now I'm wondering if we're going to get a bunch of what happens before the games. Again, it's called Sunrise on the Reaping, and the synopsis is very focused on that day of the reaping. It talks a lot about Hamish on that day and then kind of goes on to talk about the Hunger Games. So I'm wondering if I'm not still right about that and we're not going to get that much of the time of him in the actual Hunger Games, but maybe we're going to focus a lot more on what happens before the Hunger Games and all the stuff leading up to the Hunger Games, especially because she said this book is about propaganda. So maybe we'll see how they market the Hunger Games and all of that. And then the games will actually happen and we'll get a bit of the afterwards and kind of what leads to the Capitol killing his family and all that. I'm very curious to see how she does it, especially because unlike with the first book, we know how this one turns out. The only thing we knew for sure about the first book is that Coriolanus Snow ends up becoming President Snow. So you know he survives the story. But other than that, you know nothing. The very fascinating thing to me about this book is that we know so much about Hamish's Hunger Games from the original trilogy. So she has to find a way to make it interesting and to make there still be like plot twists and things that surprise you with you knowing essentially exactly how his Hunger Games go down and the fact that his family and girlfriend die after the games. I actually think that we are going to get some intense surprises in this because I just think that she has teed herself up too good of an opportunity now talking about propaganda. I'm wondering if she's not going to play with what's remembered and documented about Hamish's Hunger Games being slightly different from how it went down, not just with us like getting the up close and personal from Hamish and getting to see how it went down through his eyes, but that maybe genuinely some of how it's recounted and remembered is actually different from how it actually happened. That would be super cool. And I think that Suzanne Collins being as genius an author as she is, having an opportunity like that, I feel like she almost has to do something like that. That's why I still have this feeling that his love is not dead. I still have this just feeling in my gut that she doesn't end up dying and maybe he lies to the Capitol about who his significant other is or they get confused and they kill the wrong person and he obviously doesn't correct the record or whatever it might be. Because I feel like there has to be some sort of aspect of this, of like what we've been told 25 years later isn't exactly how it went down because that's sort of part of how propaganda works in a way. Or I guess should say is a commentary you could make about propaganda. Going back to the point I was making, sorry, I'm all over the place. I do still think we're not going to get that much time in the actual Hunger Games. Maybe we'll get a bunch of time before, a little bit in the actual games, and then a bunch of time after. Or the time after will even be shorter than I thought. 
and it'll be most of a focus on before and kind of seeing the propaganda machine up close and personal. Maybe part of how Hamish decides to fight the Capitol is by playing along with the game for a bit. So that's where we get kind of the snake and bird in one figure. All I know is it comes out on March 18th and I'm, I'm gonna be reading it and I'm gonna be making a video about it. I'm super excited. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think of the cover? Do you like it? Do you see anything in the symbolism that I missed? Do you disagree with any of my interpretation of the symbolism on the cover? Are you excited about it? Are you looking forward to it? I wanna chat with you guys about this one because I'm really excited about it and I, I wanna know what your guys' theories are. Because as we've learned, sometimes I'm incorrect. So I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Definitely comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe as always. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!